Here it is, oil change day on the Majesty. Got tools out, new oil filter, gloves, etc. It's cooled down enough. I was right it hard on the way home like I usually do. And uh, I'm gonna do this kind of quick. I can't have the camera on the whole time because you know I'm gonna have to have the gloves on. Oil's gonna be a flowing, but this is how I do it. First, get the pliers out so I can break the dipstick loose. Get it loose and uh, there, let it sit there and hang so it's open. Oil can drain faster that way. Break any vacuum loose because this thing has a, a canister type oil filter. And the gnats are out. I need to cut the grass. But working every day right now is hmm, hindering that. Okay, as you can see, this is the oil drain bolt. This is not the original bolt. The original bolt was all chewed up. Got one on eBay a while back. Yeah, it's a little dirty under here, but this is a magnetic drain bolt. Any loose metallic part particles will make their way towards that. Keep them out of important moving parts. Uh, forgot how much it was, but uh, nice six-sided now. Use the six-sided socket on it, and you won't have any won't have any problems. Here's the old filter. Hopefully, hopefully you can see it good. There it is. Old filter housing right here. Takes eight millimeter sockets on this to uh, to get that off, and it's a uh, 13 millimeter socket. By the way, on the ah, on the drain plug. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil. Um, I do it in stages only because I use this little container here. An old, uh, almost like a piece of Tupperware or whatever it is. Um, because of how low it is, yeah. The neighbors are home jamming, yay. But I'm gonna get the oil flowing and I'll be back. Always check your drain bolt for wear, tear, etc. Um, this one has the, uh, the rubber gasket built into the, well I would call it a crush washer, but it's not really what it is because of the rubber gasket. It's still good. As you can see, it's nice and clean. Um, just wipe it down. It's in good shape. The oil's about done draining, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that open while I get the uh, oil filter out next. Took the cover off the oil filter housing so you can see it. The end of it's still there. Uh, filter's still in. I wanted to show you the cover. See the spring right there? Don't lose that. That keeps the oil filter pressed into place so that the oil flows through the filter properly. Uh, without that, it can move all around. Oil pressure will probably still be there. You might not notice anything, but stuff is not going to be working properly. Uh, remember, there's no oil pressure gauge on this on this engine, so uh, <laughs> yeah. We, the last thing I'll be doing, I'll be, I'll be showing you, is how we verify oil pressure. But check your seal. You know, the, the manual says change it every time. I never have because the seal is still good. And you can see what holds it in. A little, get close enough here. Little pieces are not there. Built into the actual cover. Hold the whole thing in place. I'm going to wipe this all out. Now, the oil filter sometimes doesn't want to come out. It's like sits in there because it's got a rubber seal on the inside that holds it in place. So, handy dandy little flat tip screwdriver, gently pry. Remember, this is aluminum housing. Oh, there we go. See, broke loose. Trying to do this and look through this viewfinder at the same time. It's fun. And it's just a teeny tiny little canister filter. Not much to it. Three on eBay. Eight bucks shipped to the house. That's it. Take a look inside there. You'll see that there is another spring. Don't know if this is going to show it. We'll try. Whoa, look at that. Yes. See, there's another spring in there and a rubber seal on the end of that shaft. Wait a minute. No. I'm sorry. God. 
got that wrong. It's not the spring. That's just the shaft. Okay, good. Don't know why I said that. As you were, scratch that. Uh, that's just the shaft. Make sure the rubber piece is still on there that it's intact. In fact, I can actually see it better with this camera. There we go. Look at that. Very cool. Anyway, it's still good. Uh, if need be, get new seals. Um, it's possible these could last the lifetime of the vehicle. I don't know. Like I said, the uh, manual says to replace them every time. Um, most places say to do that every time with things like this. Your, your results may vary, but I haven't had to. Anyway, um, that's about all there is to this. I'm going to go ahead and put the new filter in, drain flow back in, and then we'll be putting oil in. Okay, cover's back on. Um, remember something, folks. These are tiny little bolts. You know, 8 millimeter socket to put them on. I think, what does that make them? Like a 5 millimeter bolt with fine thread. Don't, don't go all nuts on them. I think it's uh, 8 foot pounds anyway. I just snug them down pretty good. They're not going to fall out. Same thing with the main drain plug. I, I forgot what the torque is on that. I was just, just snug them up real good. It's not going to fall out. It's got that rubber piece on it too. Uh, just, just make sure it doesn't leak. Also, since oil tends to go all over when you drain it, Wipe it all down, because when you're checking for leaks, like you should do, because uh, there's no way to tell. Like I said, no all pressure gauge at all. No idiot light, no gauge, nothing, nothing. Your engine will totally seize up. You won't know why. Trail of oil will be behind you if you're not paying attention. So it's important to look for things like this. The scooter has everything else including a temperature gauge, but no oil pressure. The most important gauge you can have on any engine is oil pressure, and we don't have one. I know, right? Okay. Anyhow, I'm going to put the old oil up and stuff, and uh, we'll get to filling it up. All right. There's your oil fill hole. It's in an awesome spot, isn't it? Hmm, good thing the engine's cool down. Look where it's at. Alright, I'm going to show you out this cool new funnel fill thingy I got at Walmart. Look at that. Screws on to bottles, it looks like. And of course, it's not going to screw on to anything that I have oil in right now. So, but it does this neat little feature. Let's see if I can... pulls out and bends. So, we're hoping we can, uh, yeah, get that down in there, because this thing is just, like I said, it's in a weird place. Put the camera down and do this. Hold on, get back in a second. Well, here's what we got. We're going to use the cheap funnel here into the cheap adjustable neck thingy thing, but it doesn't want to stay on its own. I should probably tie a string or something on here and hook it to the bike, but right now I'm just going to use two hands, so I'm not going to be able to film doing this, but I'm going to put in 58 ounces of synthetic 10W30. 58 ounces is 1.8 quarts. That's what it takes it to the full line. And I'm going to go ahead and put the whole thing in now because I know that's what it takes. Um, if you're not sure, you always use the dipstick to measure, but you have to get this thing on a center stand and it has to be exactly level. Where I'm at right now is on a hill. I'm not, like I said, I'm not worried about it. I know that's what it takes. Um, I can always check it. Like at work tomorrow where I park, it's at a perfect level. I will, uh, I can check it then, but still I know as long as it doesn't leak, I know it's all there. Well, let's go ahead and put this in and I'll show you that oil verification spot. Okay, what we're going to do here is verify oil pressure. I have not started the engine yet. Get under the seat. Move the cover off the top of the engine, you know, where to get to the spark plug and stuff, okay? Um, I just replaced that not long ago. It's, everything's good. Now, to get to the bolt, 
that we're going to loosen, I'll show it, fits right here on the end of the wrench. Boom, yeah. Right there. What we're going to do, as you can see, I've already broke it loose. I'm just going to loosen it up a bit. Kind of strange trying to do the camera and this at the same time. Just get a thread or two showing. You'll know which one it is. That's the copper gasket right there. Okay. That should be enough. Um, oh, yeah. And you can see in the background there. Yeah, you can see the, uh, the bleeder screw for the, for the coolant. I think that's it. Nope. Ah, oh, one for the coolants up top. Wow, that must be for the idle or something. Anyway, one thing to time here. Um, there it is. So, up. Oh. Ah, just remember, I put the kickstand down. Safety first. That's why. That's why they have that on there. This thing wouldn't even attempt to start. That fuel pump. Good to go. Hit starter. Ah. In fact, just to make me happy, I'm going to loosen it up a little bit more. Oh, there we go. That's a lot looser. Let's power that up again. Now, there was a guy on the forum who didn't verify that. He was talking about, oh, there's an air bleed screw for the coolant. And there is. You have to do the one for the coolant. This one's not a requirement. It's just to verify you have oil pressure. It doesn't technically bleed anything. However, you saw a little bit of bubblage. Well, when you have this kind of oil filter, that happens. This bolt does not take much torque. I believe it's actually less than five foot-pounds. I probably put twice that on there. Uh, I tend to overdo some things. Don't break it. This is all aluminum stuff. You break that, you got problems. But anyway, now I'll just put the cover and everything back on. And then I'll show you the absolutely final step. Alrighty, here's the absolute final step. Turn ignition on. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, oil, blink, blink, blink. Hey, you know what's really cool is when you got the oil and the V-belt blanking at the same time. It's kind of cool how it's in sync with the clock. Everything's just going off like that. And boy, is it annoying when it's nighttime. Anyhow, you turn the key on, like we did. Press and hold the oil change for, I believe they said, 1.4 seconds or whatever. Release. Notice how it's not flashing anymore. Boom, yeah. I record the mileage. Oh, nice even number. 28,200 miles. It's still a youngster. But man, I've put 22,000 miles on it since I bought it. And it's not bad. But anyhow, that's all there is to an oil change. It's just nothing. And I just wanted to share that with you. Just make sure you have decent enough tools. Anybody can do this. Like I said, remember to check for leaks. Leaks, leaks, leaks. You have no way of knowing if you have oil pressure. If I decide to actually go ahead and do something about that, I will definitely post a video on it. Until then, ride safe.